Hi guys and a warm welcome back to the channel of HFV. We are in the Swedish capital in Stockholm. If I would go 10 meters to the left, to the right, from your point of view, we would be in Solna already. Solna is uh, technically, geographically, is a part of Stockholm, but administratively it's not. And uh, it's where our home team today is located. We are here in Stockholm for the Stockholm's Derby, of course. One of them, because there are three, since there are three really big teams, really well-supported teams in Stockholm, Oiko, you're Gordon and Hammarby. Last time I was the Jur Gordon against Hammarby and this time it will be, yeah, sorry for the cars in the background, we're on a bridge, a bus now, of course. So last time I was the Jur Gordon and Hammarby and now it's gonna be Oiko against Hammarby. Round 20 of Allsvenskan, the Swedish first tier. If we look at the table, we see that today's away side, Hammarby are on the second place, 39 points, two points behind league leaders Hecken and Oiko not doing so well this season. They are behind Hammarby on the fourth place with 35 points. These two are arguably the most famous teams if it comes to supporter culture, to TIFOs, choreographies. Not only in Sweden, not only in Scandinavia, arguably in like whole of the Nordic countries. We could say geographically that the Oiko supporters, the fan base are more like they were founded, Oiko were founded in uh, Nordmalm and their supporters are more the northern part of, uh, of Stockholm and Hammarby were founded in Södermalm and that means that they're more of the, the southern part of Stockholm. Obviously there is some mix but uh, you, you can find more Oiko supporters, a bigger base in the northern, perhaps northwestern part of Stockholm and more of Hammarby supporters in the south. Well, we see some of the best examples for the excellent choreographies and TIFOs of both Aiko and Hammarby. We will talk about their first ever meeting that dates back to 1920, a 1-0 Hammarby victory. However, in 1965 there was an 8-1 Aiko victory away, which is the biggest goal difference in the derbies so far. The last 10 meetings of these two, we see 6 Aiko wins, 3 Hammarby wins and 1 draw. Mainly it was, we, we don't see a Hammarby victory away. We saw that they won some games at home. Aiko won all their games at home. This is all we need to know before the game. Our venue today is Friends Arena, home of the Swedish national team. And of course, today's home team, Aiko, will make our way there tomorrow actually because now it's uh, 27th of August in the evening you just see in the background uh, the sun went down here in the Huvudstad Brun, which is uh, a bridge connecting Solna and Stockholm. So. I'll get a good night's sleep now and then see you at Friends Arena tomorrow. Match day now, two and a half hours to go until kickoff. Not the nicest weather here today. I got up here at Solna Centrum to introduce you some history. This one in the background, let's focus on it. Yeah, this is the Dallas Tower of Solna. And the reason I stopped here is that the old stadium of Aiko and the Swedish national team demolished in 2013. Rosunda Stadion was located just behind this Dallas Tower. Yeah, we are going to make our way there. There are block of houses like those. That's already, I think, the area of the stadium. Block of houses and a parking lot in a place of, uh, of Rosunda Stadion. You can see the Dallas Tower of Solna on the picture, which is appearing on the screen right now. And as you see right here, here in front of me. Here was one of the corner of the stadium. We'll make our way there to the parking lot. I hope the water in the background doesn't make too much noise. Yeah, so this is in the place of the famous Rosunda Stadion. Opened in 1937, demolished, as I said, in 2013, capacity of 36,600 people. A quite famous football game was played here. The 1958 World Cup of Football was here in Sweden and the final took place here. About here, yeah, in the rules in the stadion. Yeah, guys, this is where Brazil won 5-2 against the hosting nation, Sweden. And this is where Pelé, the 18-year-old Pelé, scored in the World Cup final. Here where the block of houses end and the parking lot starts. This street could mark about the halfway line. So it's obviously quite sad to see what's in place of a legendary stadium, but obviously, after a time, every stadium has to be demolished. Yeah, this is pretty much the, the fate of, of every stadium, but it's still obviously sad to see. I was a um, 13 year old back then. When uh, when this got demolished, I didn't have the chance to come here, obviously, because I'm living still in Hungary uh, and discovering the European football culture. Yeah, so that's it. I think that's all we need to know. And uh, Fence Arena, or National Arena, which I introduced yesterday, is about a 40 minute walk from here, so let's make our way there, finally. 
the pubs here are already full of home supporters. Here we are, Fans Arena, as you see there. Welcome in Ham means welcome home, of course. And the interesting thing about uh, Friends Arena is that you would think it's a sponsor name. Friends are a non-profit organization to prevent bullying. So the sponsor of, uh, of this stadium are actually Swedbank, but they give the naming rights to, to Friends, which, as I said, are a non-profit organization to prevent bullying. So it's really for the good cause. I think this is a quite unique example, so fair play to to this organization. Oiko everywhere, of course, and there we see the mall of Scandinavia, which is the second largest mall in the Nordic country, is located just next to the stadium. Another interesting thing, so the stadium has a capacity of 50,000 people at spare in the ground. So I think it must be the second and the third tier we see here, and the first tier is uh, below us. The statue of the founders of Oiko here. We will enter the stadium here, uh, can't go to the area because as you see some RB supporters just arrived and the area is closed there. <laughs> Here we are guys, Friends Arena, away section there. Home will trust the Norasto is here. against the wires for the TIFO here already and for your information the third tier is only opened if the first two tiers are sold out because otherwise it would not worth it for the club to maintain it to open the third tier but of course it's a derby it's almost full house almost sold out so it was worth opening the third tier today
turned away by the away side, Hamar B. Against two defenders, but he gets it out to the right side. Eric Bink. I think it was first minute, one nil for our equal. Oh my god! Look at this goal scorer, the new signing of our equal, Jon Gidetti. Big blow for Aiko, goes for Orion Giretti, has to come off because of an injury in the 28th minute.
So we saw both teams scoring 37th minute equalizer by Nahir Basara for Hammarby. We saw quite spectacular away limbs there. And then they started the pyro as well. So 1 1, we are approaching the end of the first half. The limbs we saw right in the beginning and 10 minutes before the end of the first half, first by the home side and then by the away supporters set. It's just mental. It's, Sweden has, I think, one of the best football cultures in Europe. It's underrated. That's why I'm here to spread the word about it. Uh, yeah, so Oiko, sorry, Sharp. Uh, but they, then they dropped uh, the level of play a bit, although they had another big chance, but then they gave Hamburg more space. And uh, Hammarby used it, although Hammarby have uh, an artificial grass stadium and, uh, and this is natural grass here in uh, Sola in France Arena. So they always say that Hammarby can't play on natural grass. Well, they could score a goal now, it's 1-1 uh, it's at half time. The best striker of uh, Oiko is injured, who scored the first goal, Jan Gidetti, so he won't be able to have the team anymore. But uh, yeah, it depends on the motivation. In derbies, it doesn't count how good you are individually or as a team. It doesn't count, only the motivation. So we'll see about the second half. Yeah, we saw really excellent celebrations. Uh, both teams scored uh, in front of their ultras, hoping for more of the same in the second half. As you see, I haven't finished my halftime coffee yet. 47th minute, Oiko re established their lead by number by Nicola Stefanelli. Limps right in the beginning of the first half and of the second half. Strange scenes here in the 59th minute. We thought it was offside, but the goal was given eventually, 2-2. I didn't record the moment of the pass, so I couldn't see. Uh, you couldn't see from the vlog whether it was offside. We'll see after the game in the, in the highlights, I don't know. But 2-2, that's for sure.
Spaß. chance from the free kick for Hamarbi in the 75th minute. It was a big chance indeed. Here we have our spectator number today. It's almost full house. Now they are pressing as well. Facing a tough Aiko defense. Can he shoot? End of the 90 minutes. Only two minutes added on. This is the time both teams have to grab the win. Two, two ups and downs in this game. None of the teams can be entirely happy or entirely sad with uh, this draw. About the TIFOs, I think they weren't bad, but both teams have done better. Also, which I showed you before the game, I think all of those were actually better. This was the first time when Hamar B scored in France Arena since April 2017. And about the second half, in the first minute of the second half, we got a, a lucky goal for Aiko, which was deflected on uh, on one of the Hamar B defenders' uh, leg and went in quite strangely, but it went in eventually. And then the equalizer, and watch it back, it was not offside. Sorry once more for, uh, for not catching that great uh, through ball, because it was a really great assist from uh, from the back, from the own half of, of Hamar B. And after that, uh, neither of the teams could really recover. We saw some Hamar B chances towards the end, but Two, two remained. I usually get some interviews before the game, it was not the case today, sorry for that. I hope you still enjoy the content. If you're up for more Swedish vlogs, go on and check the Sweden playlist on the channel. It was exactly 10 months ago on the 28th of October 2021 when I first came to Sweden and made actually my first ever vlog abroad. And since then it's going well. Quite many uh, Alsvenskan vlogs, a few Super Etan vlogs, a Swedish Cup final vlog. You can find all of them on the Sweden playlist. That's it for today, guys. If you're up for more regular content, join me on Instagram and on Twitter. And I hope to see you next time on the channel. I was HFV. Take care. Once more, I hope you enjoy what you saw.